Hi everybody. Sorry I'm late doing these videos. Um, today I want to discuss like a really sad disappointment. Uh, recently one of my favorite writers just passed away. And even though I never really met uh, this person, this person's work has pretty much uh, given me hope to still make movies regardless, right? So I'm not going to say who it was because um, I never hired him and I never like spoke to him. So I'm just going to not say who he was. Um, but he had his own personal website. Um, he wasn't, like, huge, like, multi-war winning person or whatever, but I really appreciate his, you know, screenwriting work, you know, for scripts, you know, and recently he passed away, and, um, you know, a long time ago, I think I've been telling you guys this, that, um, a re a, the the first movie that I want to work on was a historical movie and I wanted to get it made and stuff like that all those years ago I think it was like 2011 2012 around that time and I was just really struggling on how to you know get a independent movie together and I'm still struggling to this day of you know trying to make sure I follow the uh, legalities and stuff like that with, you know, making a movie on the independent level. But unfortunately, um, with this writer, he's um, rep by a union and an agency. So I would have to pay him for him to write, right? Because, you know, writers need to be paid. But I just didn't know how much but like a couple months ago I thought about actually you know just going on his website and asking like a couple of questions and um stuff like that to make like movies for a micro budget for historical movies but he he usually does that but unfortunately I guess he was having health problems I mean he's been having health problems for a very long time but he lost, like, a tremendous amount of weight, and I kind of didn't want to bother him. And also, well, because I'm shy, I didn't have the courage to. And, um, years ago, I actually thought about him for writing my movie. And I didn't know how to present myself to a writer to basically hire him you know, without paying him, you know, a huge goblet of money and stuff like that, because that's what, ha that's what happens, you know, people need to be paid, uh, they called themselves, like, higher gun scripts or whatever, and he's really good at it, and his, his movies are very, um, great, and they're packed with, you know, action, adventure, and all this type of stuff. Um, but, like, a couple months ago, I thought about, you know, emailing him on his personal website. But I didn't take the chance to because I was scared. And also, I didn't want to look unprofessional. Because he's part of a union, which is the Writers Guild. And also, he has an agent. And I didn't want to go up to a guy and basically say, Hey, would you like to be a higher gun for a script? So, without being paid. And that's really bad in the Writers Guild Union and the agency without money being sent to them. So, that was the reason why. And of course, I was shy about it. 
So, I mean, at the time, I was dealing a lot of stuff, you know? My mom going to the hospital, dealing with all that type of stuff. And I forgot. Because I was so busy. And, you know, the sad part was, you know, I never got to, you know, have a conversation with him or whatever. But I just don't want to be seen as sort of an annoyance or, like, um, unprofessional, you know. And in this industry, people remember you. Especially when you're dealing with their professional assistants and agents and managers and other uh, entourage members. So I decided not to do it because I was shy and I didn't have the courage and I didn't want to look unprofessional. It would be, you know, really, really bad on my part. And plus, you know, with the industry being, you know, talkative behind people's backs is not something I wanted to be known for, you know. And that was the reason why. But unfortunately, he passed away. And it sucks. But um, I'm not going to say his name because I don't know his personal business and stuff like that. And it's not like I um, want to put his stuff out there. But he, he has um, made a couple of scripts and stuff like that. But he was also known for his activism and stuff like that so I kind of you know don't want any like negative stuff to come on me and stuff like that I just loved and appreciated his work and um a long time ago I actually thought of of him for this historical movie that I want to make and um I didn't know how to contact agents, the writers, um, stuff like that. I didn't know how to do that. You know, what were the, you know, le legalities of doing that? And it was just something that I didn't know what to do. Because I was young, you know? And there weren't, like, a lot of books out about putting together uh, an independent movie. So, and it's not just that, but, um, the location of where to film it. So, I always liked his work, and, you know, it, it's just tough, because I never got to take the chance of, you know, just doing research and asking him questions through his website, because I didn't know if it was run by his agent, or his union, or whatever, but I just loved his work. I appreciated his work. You know, he he wrote some amazing movies and stuff like that. I can't remember which ones recently. It's been a long time. But um, he was also from my home state, you know. So, and the reason being I want to work with him was because not only was he a great screenwriter but he was also from my state and I was thinking of making a independent movie here you know with historical um references to it but I don't know with everything that's going on today like it used to be and I was kind of like intimidated by him and that's the reason why I didn't have the courage to you know uh email him and stuff like that but it's just really, really sad. But um, my historical movie, you know, I'm not mad. It's just that, you know, I had to find another way of making it. But at the same time, it was my first movie that I was going to make, you know. I There was just, like, a lot of steps that I took that went, wind up in a wrong turn, basically. And it sucks. But at the same time, there were a lot of things that I didn't know. And that's probably the reason why I decided not to, you know, 
contact him or his agent or his reps or whatever because I I just don't know what to do. I don't know how to present myself, you know? Um, but it's just sad, you know? But I will say this, he is a great writer. But anyways, um, in a way, I just feel like a failure because I want to make that movie a long time ago. I want to get back to my, you know, uh, film ministry and in this area because there's basically none and I want to make something over here and you know it just didn't happen and that's just how it goes but here's the thing I'm not mad I'm not disappointed it's just the way life is you know um of course you know this is devastating but at the same time I I don't know him he doesn't know me and stuff like that but Anyways, um, with this historical movie, originally I want to, sh uh, make it in Colonial Williamsburg, but the only problem is, is that you're not allowed to film there. You would have to have, you know, special permission and then a member from their, um, I guess some type of historical, uh, society has to be there in order to help you out and make sure... Nothing goes wrong and stuff like that. I mean, for all these years, I always want to do this movie. And, you know, I mean, hopefully one day I will get to make it and, you know, stuff like that. But, you know, um, this guy was really known to make really great, like, even though that... He, uh, his movies, I think some of his movies were nominated for, you know, an Oscar and stuff like that. But at the same time, you know, I think it's just best that I've, you know, uh, move on. Because, you know, I didn't hire him. There was no contract sign. But, you know, for all these years, you know, to, to know that you know, you can actually make a historical project for a micro budget. I don't know if you can. I always wondered about that because I've been seeing this one guy who's making like above a hundred grand for historical movies. But um mine would have to be really, really small. And I thought about like filming it in Romania. They have like this sort of I think Cold Mountain was filmed there, but that was for a Civil War project. So, we would probably have to film in a different, uh, I mean, they would have to replace some of their, um, uh, production design to make it look like from the colonial times during the, you know, Revolutionary War, which is what my film is based on. And, you know... That's what happened. And unfortunately, historical movies nowadays, you know, for the past couple decades, I should say, they're really hard to get make. Uh, because they're very expensive. And I didn't even know that. I, I didn't. And that was probably one of my many mistakes. But in order to learn, you have to make mistakes. So I learned. But, you know, um, I mean, it wasn't just this one writer. I had several writers in my head that I want to work with and stuff like that. It's just that they're expensive, you know. I don't want to just say, hey, you're hired and not pay them. It's it's just wrong. And I want to, you know, um, make a movie that I can make literally by myself without having to go through all these freaking hoops for and that's the reason why this is no disrespect to that writer it's just that there are rules in place because uh he's from the industry he's from the hollywood industry and he has unions that protect him and he has an agent that protects him so that's the reason why i am not mad but it's just that i did not know 
what were the legal steps towards, you know, getting a movie made on the independent level. I just didn't know what to do. I felt, you know, like I was confused and stuff like that. Like, I didn't know what to, you know, what precautionary steps I should take before, you know, I make a movie. And it's so hard to this day trying to learn different things about, you know, this this industry. And in, for the independent film industry, there's no infrastructure whatsoever. There's no rules. There's no, you know, uh, committee that you have to go through. There's uh, unions and you also have to deal with the unions too. And that's the reason why. So I didn't really know the, the necessary steps towards, you know, making that um, decision. So I still love this writer. I still love his work. You know, it's incredibly sad to hear that he passed away. But, you know, I'm ready to move on with my life. And, you know, this is what life is, you know. You got to appreciate the life that you have, you know. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I pretty much, you know, got tears in my eyes reading his thing. Because I was just like, man, I was so close to, you know, you know, contacting him and stuff like that. But, you know, unfortunately, you know, stuff happens and... You gotta appreciate, you know, the life you already have. So, I mean, with the historical movie, like, I thought about filming in Romania. I thought about filming with, you know, these known actors that were actually known TV actors. And, um, it just would have been less expensive to film actually overseas. But I really want to film over here in my home state because I want to give back to the film industry here because we have none. And it just sucks. And that's the reason why I kind of like didn't know what to do and stuff like that. I mean, it wasn't just him, like I said before. It was other writers. There was like other things. Um, I went to film in Romania because it was cheap and it is cheap. But I just didn't understand what to do and how to get the money. <laughs> like, I've tried, like, this one contest, not, like, every single year. It only comes out in, like, every couple of years or something. And it's, it's like a million dollar cash prize and you get, like, uh, a camera package or something like that to help you film your movie. And I wanted that so bad and I did try it. But I didn't, you know, get it. It's just how it is. Because, you know, everyone's vying for that, you know. But, you know, I've been noticing that these two two guys who do... Um, what's that crowdfunding website? Oh, um, Indiegogo, right? They create these movies for like below 300 grand, right? They have made so many genres, westerns, action movies, horror movies, like from the 1980s and 90s that, you know, they like and stuff like that. And I've been, you know, um, like fans of their work and stuff like that. So I've been following them too. But I just really appreciate of what they're doing and I always wondered about making this historical movie for that type of budget you know I never actually thought about doing it for that type of budget because it's impossible because you know you need a star for your movie and that's another thing you need the cash first and then you go to their agents and represent representatives and you know just that type of stuff and I kind of feel like like I didn't know like even with you know actresses for the main part um most of them were like tv actresses so they were busy but 
you know, they weren't being paid a whole lot of money for their TV acting. Like, some were supporting, some were leading. Well, mostly supporting. Um, and I think they were getting, like, 55 grand per episode. So, it's just, like... And then... But I didn't know that. Like, that's the thing. When you're trying to learn and um, try to understand how people get paid... And stuff like that. All because of the unions. All because of this. Not that it's bad or anything. But you gotta understand it. You don't want to make a mistake. And it can be costly to you. And you can end up losing your money. So I, it was better that I educate myself before um, I make a mistake. And it could cost my career or whatever. So, I think it was the right call to do, which is the reason why I didn't, you know, contact that writer or whatever, but, you know, it's just how it was. Um, but, at the same time, I'm I'm looking at these two guys and I'm really interested in, you know, maybe work working with them, maybe try and get this movie made, but at the same time, I'm... I'm working on O2 because I think it's much more easier um, and it's less costly to make. But everything I think uh, that I want to make is sort of like one of those single location movies. But I just don't know what to do. And that's why I'm not giving out a whole lot of information about it because... I just don't know what to do. Like, you gotta think about it. Like, developing your stuff. So, it's just kind of like... uh, Not that I'm scared or anything. It's just that... You know, constantly, I had a budget in my head. Let's make it for 250 grand or whatever. But I had to have a known star to it and... But that's the thing about these two guys is that they also work with actors. However, their their actors are mostly from the 1990s, 1980s, um, stuff like that. But they know to know how to attract talent, which basically what I'm trying to say is all because of what their budgets are. Their budgets can go up to like uh three hundred to three three thirty thousand. Which isn't bad. But that's what I was thinking about doing it for. But you know, like I said, life is gonna, you know, come at you. But um at the same time, you know, I'm just trying different ideas in my head. Um, trying different storylines, but, you know, O2 just keeps on popping up, and it's just like, <sighs> I guess that's the first movie that I might tackle, but at the same time, you know, just focusing on other stuff and focusing on this, just trying to maintain that sort of, like, balance, even though that, you know, my mom is going through a lot, um... And stuff like that. So that's the reason why. Uh, so I don't want you to think that, you know, uh, but failure is necessary in order for you to learn. That's just how it is. And uh, you need to understand that this is the only way. Um, because I can't go to, you know, like, a studio and say, hey, can you make my movie? Like, it's just not gonna happen. I mean, I don't have an agent. I don't have another rep or anything like that. But at the same time, if I could get this movie made for like 300 grand or even less, way less, then it would be way easier for me to make it. But I love and appreciate these two guys for like, you know, making movies independently and not giving a crap about what anybody else thinks. 
I mean, yeah, they make B movies and stuff like that. But, you know, it's their type of, you know, movies that they want to make. But, you know, I haven't... I mean, I think one time they were saying that they were going to release a book and... Uh, what was it? Oh, do some type of grant or something. Uh, oh, crowdfund. Yeah, because they like doing that a whole lot. And they're like giving back to their community and stuff like that. It's just that it's very hard to make movies. Like, you need the top-notch equipment. Well, not really top-notch, but you do need equipment and it's very expensive and you had to pay people for their time so that's the reason why i couldn't you know uh understand what i was doing because i wasn't informed enough and educated enough to do that <clears throat> so that's the reason why that maybe couldn't get made so i put it on the back burner and now i'm focusing on o2 Whenever I get around to it. Whatever. It's just that, you know, my life right now is not very good. And just dealing with a whole lot of stuff. But hopefully, maybe one day, I will get it made. But I think I've said this before. I probably have. But it's better to make some money than no money at all. And that's the number one concern that I have is that I want to make sure that, you know, say that people want to invest in me or whatever, that they're willing to take a chance on me, but I would have to make sure I get their money back. And that's what, you know, I mean by people don't really understand that, especially with independent movies, because distribution, marketing, movie theaters... Uh, talent, you need all that. You need all those freaking steps to apply to what you want in your release to make it a great, you know, movie to go to a movie theater for all audiences across the globe. So it's just, yeah, it's just definitely sad about the writer. But, you know what, I think it's time that, you know, I'm just looking up to other, you know, filmmakers and writers getting their, you know, movies made regardless. But at the same time, they're attaching, you know, huge gobs of money. Like, they used to, like, their first three movies were made for, like, 50 grand, and then they went up to 200 grand for, for basically... The past seven movies. But I don't, I don't know what they're going to do. It's pretty exciting. But you know. I like looking at their stuff. And you know. Stuff like that. Anyways. um, I hope everybody's doing well. Uh, Good night y'all. Bye.